Hi, I'm Mary Colbert. Welcome to Dr. Colbert's Divine Health Podcast. And hey, I'm Dr. Colbert. And Mary, today we're going to be talking about ringing in the ears or what we call tinnitus. And I'm seeing so many patients with this. It's crazy. And also the other one, part two of this, we want to do dizziness, which is yeah, you know, rampant I, now. Really, it is. Patients. Have you ever felt like you're on a sh- ship and you're <laughs> going to walk on the side and you, the whole room is spinning? Well, you are listening to the right podcast because we are going to give you some amazing answers that you can do to rid yourself of these feelings of vertigo and ringing in the ears. So if you know somebody who is struggling with this, you want to share this podcast. Get on the phone and call them and tell them, say, listen, you need to listen to this. These are some real hard answers. Well, I'm first excited. of all, Mary, we've seen so much over the past two years, especially we call it post-COVID. I'm seeing post-COVID tinnitus or ringing in the ears post-COVID vertigo or dizziness. I'm seeing post-COVID fatigue. I'm seeing post-COVID hair loss, alopecia. And it is amazing how these are following this viral infection. And many people are having this for months or years. And they're just... It's, and it's people who have had COVID yeah, and for, recovered. For the most part, but also yeah. other people. In fact, tinnitus affects about 10 to 15 percent of the population. That is a lot. That's of a lot of ringing in the ears. And the peak incidence occurs between the ages of 60 and 70. And about tw- only about 20 percent of people that have ringing in the ears seek medical help. The vast majority of ringing in the ears is due to associated with being exposed to loud noises hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, and it, being exposed to rock concerts, your gunshots. Church. Your, your church. church. Oh, my goodness. Your I, church music being too loud. And again, I wear uh, earplugs when I'm in church. I, I know. We do. I, we I have do. to bring them for you and myself. And you know why? Because we've seen so many hundreds and hundreds of ministers yes. who now have lost their hearing and exactly. they they wear these little hearing aids you can't even see right, them exactly. in their ear and you would be shocked at who they are but there are a lot of them wearing hearing aids now from all the years of ministry exactly being on the right. stage with the loud worship and the loud music Worship leaders that have or, lost or their hearing. Or cleaning lady exposed to that high frequency vacuum. The vacuum. And now she's she got gets hearing down loss next to and it. Some and now she can, her, yeah. half her hearing is gone. So there's a lot of things that young people are doing. And Lawnmowers, lawn equipment, chainsaws, airplanes. Protect your protect hearing. Protect your hearing. I, I carry these little foam rubber earplugs with me when I go to church. I have one for you, one for me. I carry them in my pocket. That's right. And I just roll them up, stick them in my ears, and people, I'm amazed at how 99.9% of people don't use it. I know, I and a lot it. of people think the louder the worship, the more anointing it more is. Annoying. And so <laughs> they crank it up, you They know? crank it, and I mean, it, yeah. and, and what's amazing, we just had a baby dedication service, and I saw the parents, cons- and the little babies were up front, and right are those That's right a, by them are those huge speakers just booming, and vibrating. Like, and I was seeing the little babies oh, crying and holding their ears, and I was seeing the oh. daddy or mama co- covering the baby's ears. I'm thinking, my goodness, this yeah. is injuring the hearing. And a lot of times the decibels are so high. And yeah. I, I tell a lot of patients, just put a decimal meter app on your phone and measure the decibels. And when decibels exceed, like I think it's ninety or hundred, it's there's literally an app? can be doing. There's an app on your phone. Are you you're can, kidding? Yes. You never so, told me that. Again, I forget the exact reading. I, I used to know it, but once your decibels exceed a certain amount, it can actually cause hearing damage. I think wow. it's over a hundred, a hundred twenty, something like that. But that's why you've got to really protect your hearing. And again, hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, is many times associated with ringing in the ears. That's a wow. common cause, especially. Gun, I've seen so many people that's gone out and shot their guns Lost their hearing, yeah. and didn't have ear protection. Now they're ringing. They're hear, having ringing the rest of their lives. Once that occurs, it's real difficult to reverse it. Very hard. Now, just what happened yesterday, a patient came in who had had COVID back in September. And one month after having COVID, he developed ringing in his ears. And it was so, and just in one ear, just in his uh, right ear. And he said it was kind of like having, um, you know, feedback 
uh, coming from a microphone where he couldn't focus. It's made it much harder for him to focus and concentrate and read, and he's a preacher. And so it's really affecting him. And he also found that his neck, he couldn't turn his neck. And we find that um, a lot of secondary ringing in the ears or tinnitus is due to upper cervical issues. And so instead of turning... And it's because of the COVID, you're coughing your head off. Exactly. I mean, you are hacking and yes. coughing so much. So what happens is you throw that C1 out in your yeah, neck, your right? Your upper cervical. Yeah, you can throw C1 or C2 out or even your and occiput And then that'll out. cause ringing in the ears and Exactly. Other so yeah. and what I'm trying to say is for you, especially with ringing in your ears or just one ear with upper neck stiffness and you can't turn your head from side to side, see a good chiropractor or especially a C1 specialist or an orthospinologist. I know it's a mouthful, but these are chiropractors who specialize in correcting C1 or the atlas malalignment. It is amazing when you align this one vertebra how many people with tinnitus, the tinnitus is improved or, or eventually goes away. So people with ringing in the ears sometimes have been in a car crash. Yes. Where they've had a whiplash exactly. or they've been in a fender bender. And right. the next thing you know, they don't even associate the right. two. They've got ringing in the ear and they think what suddenly is happening. Some people think the ringing in the ear has to do with high blood pressure. Can it And it that? can be. Absolutely. Can a be. lot of meds cause ringing in the ears too, Mary. Like, uh, for example, a lot of anti-inflammatory meds, aspirin, taking lots of aspirin, lots of ibuprofen, naproxen, Aleve, just uh, Celebrex, Mobic, all of these uh, anti-inflammatory meds, uh, common side effects ringing in the ears. Wow. As well as this is going to be a big podcast, well, Don. <laughs> oh, antibiotics like um, z uh, erythromycin, tetracycline, doxycycline, uh, genomyosin, all the different myosins can cause ringing in the ears. Also, Viagra, Cialis, uh, Levitra, Stendra, all of these meds for ED can trigger ringing in the ears. Diuretics, water pills like furosemide, Lasix, these commonly cause ringing Side in the ears. Side effects from the meds. Side effects, yes. As well as uh, Crestor, Lipitor, uh, Wellbutrin, uh, the medicine used for Osteoporosis, actinel can cause it, as well as the medicine we give for stopping smoking, Shantex, as well as proton pump inhibitors, such as the little purple pill, uh, Prilosic, Nexium, as well as antiarrhythmic medications, as well. There's just so many. There's so many meds that can cause this. So what I'm saying is, Maybe it's your medicine that's causing ringing in your ears. You may have to stop it and see if the ringing subsides or improves or get a different kind of medicine. There are also other causes to ringing in your ears, Mary, that a lot of people don't realize. It can be from Lyme disease. It could be from diabetes or from a B12 deficiency. I check B12 uh, for every patient that comes in my office. And if their level is less than 300, they're going to need B12. And it is amazing how people with low B12 that's less than like 230, they commonly get this ringing. They also commonly get little um, uh, problems with memory, problems with numbness and tingling in their hands and feet. And so look for B12. I look for that in every patient. I give B12 injections almost daily for people with uh, low or low normal B12 level. If your B12 level's 300 or 350 or below, you're, you're subclinical. B12, I mean, that B12 is borderline. So you recommend people doing the supplement B12. Yes, I use the active form active B12. Form. Now, 95 right. to 99% of your doctors use the inactive form of B12 injection, which is Did you is just cyanide. hear what he said? Say that again. 90? I'd say 95 to 99% of doctors, they carry B12 in their, in their offices, but they don't use the active form. Active, that's the The active keyword. form of B12 is methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin. The inactive form is cyanocobalamin. So I give the active Important form, and it there. is so amazing. Many people, about 40 to 50% of the population, have a methylation problem where they can't methylate the B12 properly to convert it to the active form. Now, when we take in B12, is it in foods that we eat? Yes, it's in the meats that we eat. Now, our vegetarians, meat gives us our... Exactly. Vegetarians, especially your vegans, are prone to B12 deficiency. So that's all I'm saying. Now, again, that's just 
people have enough B12. But I check it on everyone because when those people don't, it's, it's a miracle treatment for wow. these people. Other causes of ringing in the ears are vestibular migraines, idiopathic intracranial high blood pressure, cerumen impaction, which I see every day in my practice. We're cleaning dirty ears out every day. That can cause some ringing in your ears. A cholesteatoma, a little calcium tumor forming in the ear, can also cause ringing. Uh, Meniere's disease can do it, as well as a head or neck injury, TMJ dysfunction, temporal mandibular joint dysfunction, or TMJ can do it. It's amazing how so many things are associated with ringing in the ears. And again, so many people are just trying to use one thing, and that's why so many things don't work. Also, we talked about medicines, but also substance abuse. A lot of the drugs kids are on can lead to ringing in the ears as well as it can be vascular. It can be many times carotid atherosclerosis. It could be plaque in the vertebral basilar area in the neck. So uh, we have to make sure that vascularly speaking, there's not plaque forming in these arteries. Now, Don, because we have seen so many patients post-COVID in ringing in the ears, let's go to what you're doing to help them. What are you recommending for those patients that you know the direct cause is probably COVID, like the one who came in well, yesterday? Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Well, again, for the, for the patient I saw yesterday, again, real, real simple what I did. I examined him, examined his ears, no wax in his ears, mm-hmm. examined his neck. He could barely turn his neck from side to side initially. I checked the C1, real poor limitation in C1 on the right side. And uh, also, I checked, uh, you know, checked his nose. Nose was fine. Checked his eyes. Checked everything. But I really noticed the neck. He had impaired range of motion in the neck. The C1 was real stiff and painful. When I touched C1 on the right, very tender there. And he would tell me when he would be talking to someone, he couldn't always turn his head. In the meantime, he has to turn his entire body. Again, you ask, and, and they, the patient will tell you this information. You gather it from your history. Also, I asked him, well, did you lose hair when you had COVID? Yes, I lost about half of my hair. Well, that immediately alerted me that sulfur, the main amino acid in hair is a sulfur amino acid, cysteine. And so I checked these patients. Many patients who have had COVID become sensitized to sulfur. And it just so happens the most key anti-inflammatory a nutrient that our body needs to decrease inflammation is glutathione, which needs sulfur. It's a sulfur-based amino acid. And you can't take it because you've developed a sensitivity yes, to it. Yes, and it won't work. So it won't work. So no. I, I have a way to check for sulfur sensitivity. I have a vial of sulfur. I check for it. And, and he you was do sensitive. a desensitization I did a process. desensitization yeah. to sulfur. And then I also, you know, so it, I fixed the sulfur sensitivity. And you fixed his neck. And then his, I fixed his, C1 his neck. Was the C1 out. was out. But usually I refer people to C1 specialist, but I didn't have one here. So I have a little instrument where I can do that. Don generally. knows how to do it. But I usually refer one to a C1 specialist, right. which are good, an orthospinologist. And then what I did is I put him on a glutathione boosting supplement. And now his ears already better. But the thing he noticed immediately, he said he had disequilibrium. His equilibrium was restored. He said he had a stiffness in his neck, total freedom of range of motion. And he says the humming is improving. He says, but my lymphatics seem to have opened up. He says, before, I felt like my lymphatics, it, they were just weren't draining properly. It's amazing when you Like he was clogged up on like, one exactly, side, he said. Exactly yeah. right. So, again, he's already started healing. But when I check the acupuncture points, they're strong now. So we do a form of We testing. know the ringing will disappear. Yeah. And so, yeah. again, he's already started healing, which is absolutely That's amazing. Cool. Then what I also did is there was a traumatic element to his problem. Because he's a preacher, and when he felt humming and ringing in that right ear, it stressed him, and he felt powerlessness. And the powerlessness is a motion that affects the thyroid, which also affects C1. Wow. So I, I use a special laser, a cold laser, to identify emotional traumas. And we use trauma resolution therapy on so many patients using my laser. Now, I know there are going to be medical people listening to this podcast and they're like, 
Dr. Colbert is speaking French. Mm -hmm. I do not even understand half of what he's saying. I've been using lasers yeah. for 25 years. They are absolutely Let me amazing. just clarify to you something. Don has been going to seminars all over the world pursuing after different modalities of treatment of people. He has gone outside the box looking for things because he has seen it work. Well, and, I saw this. And he many, likes the fruit. Right. The fruit works. Well, I saw this many years ago back in the 90s, and, and I'll never forget my nurse practitioner back then. I trained her how to do trauma release therapy in the 90s. I learned this in the early 90s from a German neurologist. And it was so funny. She went to a nurse practitioner convention, or excuse me, physician assistant convention, and they asked her, well, what are you doing? And she says, well, we treat a lot of fibromyalgia. For some reason, so many patients come to see me. And Dr. Colbert taught me how to do trauma resolution therapy. And she says, for some weird reason, most of these people heal. And these fibromyalgia patients start to get healed. So what we do with that, with the trauma resolution, uses lasers and it uses acupressure points and it uses eye movements and colored glasses, which release trauma. What just so happened, this patient who had been exposed to COVID, he, that, that ringing in the ears had traumatized him and produced a feeling of, of powerlessness. We released it using lasers, using acupressure points on the back, using eye movements, and release the trauma, and gone. And Don de totally him gone. to the sulfur this morning, because we had breakfast with him before, and he, he was sitting, and his arm shot up <laughs> in great. the air, and he went, my healing has begun. Amen. And he I looked so at him, excited. and I said, what are you talking about? He goes, no, Mary, you don't understand. For the last nine months, I have not been able to eat eggs because they tasted like sulfur. sulfur yeah. <laughs> he said, these eggs are amazing. And I, I get the best eggs, too, yeah. that are those uh, farm-raised chickens that are in the chicken yard. They're deep yellow yolks, just delicious. But, I have but eggs. He, the, the point is you desensed him yeah. to sulfur yesterday, and today he was— because sulfur's in eggs. Yes, eggs it is. Eggs has sulfur. The food's high in sulfur, egg yolks and garlic and onions and broccoli and collard flour and cabbage all of those are sulfur foods well he couldn't eat those he would right. he would taste sulfur Could, couldn't stand it but right. now he can and it's amazing how this works and you need the sulfur because that's what helps your hair <laughs> exactly <laughs> and if you're decent to, if you are sensitized to sulfur your hair you lose is your hair keep, you'll lose and your so hair mary what out. i yeah. found again we're going back to covid so many of you who've had post-covid alopecia post-COVID joint aches, post-COVID tinnitus, many times it relates to the sulfur. And so I can literally descent so many people to sulfur and biotin. Those two nutrients are blown out. It's kind of like a fuse blowing out. But it's, we desense people to these, and then all of a sudden we give them our collagen and a little bit of biotin, one or five milligrams, and it's amazing how their hair comes back. It is absolutely amazing. Women who have lost half their hair, they're amazed how most of their hair comes back, if not all of it. I know. But it's amazing how the sulfur affects some people, not everyone, with tinnitus, okay? Now, another product that helps some people with tinnitus, you can get at Walgreens or Walmart, is called lipoflavonoid. This contains a lemon bioflavonoid. And it's safe, and you use two tabs three times a day for a total of six a day for about 60 days. Then you can decrease it to about one tab three times a day, and it helps about 50% of people with ringing in the ears or tinnitus. Now, again, this is one thing that you can try that is effective, and it's been used for many years, so great research on it. And so it's a product that's over-the-counter that is amazing for some people. But other people, it's not. But again, with tinnitus, you have to find out what is the trigger. There's primary causes, mainly sensory neural hearing loss from loud guns, loud machines, uh, construction equipment, airplanes, loud rock and roll music, loud church services, loud music will damage your hearing and set you up for tinnitus. And then medicines. Many times it's just the meds you're on. Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing how we can help tinnitus just with these simple things. And then water. We tell people, remember, 
that the body needs water. Water is absolutely amazing at healing the body and helping many people with tinnitus, as well as that master antioxidant, glutathione. You say, how do I get glutathione? You can get it just with a simple over-the-counter supplement such as N-acetylcysteine, C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E, 500 milligrams twice a day. We have a glutathione spray that you spray in your mouth, two sprays, hold it in your mouth 30 seconds and swallow, or a product I love called Celgevity that you get online two twice a day. Well, you know, you have to you have to call our office to get the number to right. be able to order it. And also, Mary, I give IV glutathione for patients that are really bad, and it's amazing for some people. It doesn't help everyone, but for some people it's amazing. So those few things, the water, the you know healthy diet like our Beyond Keto with lots of that high polyphenol olive oil that's so healthy for you, lots of living foods, lots of green veggies, as well as your, well, your Celgevity and your lipoflavonoid. And then it's amazing how so many people heal and getting them to the C1 specialist if they have a neck injury. A lot of tinnitus is related to that C1 being out. It's amazing. Okay, now people listening are going, okay, but can he get to the vertigo? Because I have vertigo. And there, that is a growing problem, it seems like, as well. People, now my brother... He oh, had yeah. vertigo so bad, he was not able to walk because he got COVID and he got it bad. And a few months later, all of a sudden, one morning he gets up and he felt like he was on a ship where right, it was right, shifting right. and he couldn't move. And he ended up, they put him in the hospital. He was in the hospital for three days trying mm-hmm. to figure out. They thought he what, had a pre-stroke a or a stroke. A pre-stroke or something because yeah. his vertigo was so bad. And that is a cause of, of dizziness or strokes and pre-strokes. Absolutely. Right, exactly. But his was vertigo. So he's talking to me on the phone and I Don hears me and he goes, Mary, Mary, tell him he needs to do these positions. He's got crystals in his inner ear, right. and this will cause the crystals to dissolve and pop. And he goes, when they do, his vertigo is going to go away. And he's like, what is he saying for me to do? So I told him what to do and how to do these positions over the phone, which Don's going to go over. And, guys, I'm not kidding. Right there, like within 30 minutes, my brother's like, Mary, it's, it's gone. <laughs> I know. My vertigo is gone. Oh, my gosh. You don't understand. I've been to all these doctors and all this and trying to figure it out. So, Don, you got to explain. Well, this first is exciting. Of all, okay. th- this is so simple, guys. It's called the Epley, E-P-L-E-Y maneuvers. And all you do is just put your uh, head in a position. You Generally, you turn your head to the side, 45-degree angle, and look up. And then see if that reproduces the dizziness. If it does, you hold it in that position 30 seconds and boom. The little crystals or the little stones in the middle ear in the semicircular canals will literally dissolve. It's that quick. Now, you can, can you go to the internet and Google yeah, this absolutely. for the position? Can, What's it called again? It's called Spell Epley, it E-P-L-E-Y maneuvers. And you just put your head through these maneuvers and find the maneuver that reproduces the dizziness. And you keep your head in that position for about 30 seconds and boom, it goes away. Now, you may have to repeat it a few times, but it will eventually totally go away. Now, what is so funny about this is after this happened, one day we were at the Gaylord and Mm -hmm. just out of the (laughs) blue, I became so dizzy and so, I mean, I was like, what's wrong with me? I could hardly walk. The whole room was spinning. And I'm like, Don, something's wrong. Something's wrong. So (laughs) we go home. And I said, I, I feel so sick. I feel dizzy. I would feel the, like the room's spinning. He goes, okay, you've got what your brother has. <laughs> you got benign positional yep. vertigo. So he had me do this head maneuver. The and maneuvers. inside my head, I heard a pop like that. And I went, something just popped. And so he that's goes, that's a good thing. That's good. That's good, Mary. That's one of the crystals. You were you forming a crystal. Yep. And sure enough, I got up and I stood up and I went, it's gone. Now, again... Her brother had used meclizine, meclizine, M-E-C-L-I-Z-I-N-E. You get it at Walgreens or Walmart. And you can take that in the meantime until you find your position that will literally cause those little crystals to dissolve. It dissolves them. So this supplement actually helps with it. It's over the counter. Well, it's a medicine. It's not a supplement. But it's over the counter med. It's over the counter med. Right. 
That's the point. You don't have to get a prescription for so it. So in other words, most people don't have to get run to the ER. Now, again, there's other causes of dizziness. There's there's central causes. So again, there's uh, many di- different causes. It could be a cerebral vascular disease or a vestibular migraine, or it could be a meningioma, or it could be psychiatric. It could be simply this benign positional vertigo, which Mary had and her brother had. And that what happens is if you when you get out of bed or turn your head a certain way rapidly, it reproduces the dizziness. And that's usually just no benign positional vertigo. It's a, it's a nothing. And the Epley maneuver clears it up most of the time. It could be vestibular neuronitis, which is an inflammation in the vestibular nerve. And uh, that's usually from a viral infection. And for those cases, some, you know, some people need something for nausea, like an, uh, an antihistamine like meclizine, or some people need a steroid, like a medrol dose pack, or some people need glutathione, like we talked about, or IV glutathione. So again, there's many different causes of dizziness. It could be from otosclerosis. It could be from Meniere's disease. Now, Meniere's disease is a uh, disease where you get generally hearing loss, and you get ringing in the ears, and you get dizziness. All three of these occur. And so, again, this is something that many people will need to have an ENT specialist because it can lead to, it can get worse and worse. But what you need to do if you have Meniere's disease, and it's, it's more common between the ages of 20 and 60, it can develop at any age though, and these people can suddenly start slipping or falling down or get a headache with hearing loss worse during an attack. And what happens, we find that one of the leading uh, causes of this is it's excess endolymphatic fluid pressure. And so it's just, it's a dysfunction in the uh, inner ear, and you got too much of that endolymphatic fluid in there that's affecting it. And so, again, we find that limiting salt is a critical thing. Limiting salt. Now, remember, most of your salt comes from processed food. So if you have many years, and I'm finding more and more people with this, you have the hearing loss in usually one ear, the dizziness, and the ringing, all three. But limiting salt is the most important thing you can do to less to 2,000 milligrams a day or less. Also, reduce your caffeine. You may have to limit your coffee because it will make it worse generally. And avoid alcohol or limit it to one drink a day. And then also what I do, these people, I I strongly recommend you see a C1 specialist or an orthospinologist to make sure that C1 is in position. I put these people on a glutathione boosting supplement. And the glutathione, again, is that master antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, which helps. It's helped many of my patients in the past who've had Meniere's disease. The one I like, again, is that Celgevity, and usually we use two twice a day, and you can call our office and get the 1-800 number to order that. And again, other things is just drinking adequate water. Water is critical. And then following the Beyond Keto Diet with lots of that high polyphenol olive oil, such as Hermus, H-E-R-M-U-S. Olive oil is an amazing anti-inflammatory for the body and fish oil. Olive oil and fish oil, along with the glutathione boosting supplements, are absolutely critical. And I recommend lots of olive oil and lots of omega-3s for these patients. And if you listen to our podcast, you know that to be true because he says it over and over and over again. Well, again, yeah. these are these are powerful it's, anti-inflammatory. Yeah, Let your food be your medicine. Yeah. The Beyond uh, Keto Diet is an anti-inflammatory diet. And Don has and a book on that, Beyond Keto. Absolutely. Great book, great book. And if you so haven't again, got it. again, it's a real simple thing. Ringing in the ears, simple. Realize lipoflavonoid is wonderful for that. C1 alignment, wonderful for it. Realize the meds causing tinnitus. And we listed all those meds, but also there are many of the similar type meds that cause um uh, Vertigo. Dizziness, vertigo, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the meds that cause vertigo are, include, number one, uh, your antibiotics, your, especially the quinolone antibiotics, which are Cipro and Levaquin, as well as your lenoxin or digoxin, nitrates, uh, nitroglycerin, 
your um, ED meds, guys, these cause dizziness, the Levitra, the Cialis, the Viagra, the Stendra, the anticholinergic meds that, that men and women use for bladder spasms or, or bladder urgency. Also, beta blockers. Beta blockers are huge, and so many men are on beta blockers. Antispasmodics, muscle relaxants, these are all causing dizziness. Now, one thing I have to add in here, and I know you're going to jump in the minute I say it, is that if you're getting out of bed or you stand up suddenly and you're woo and everything is swirling around, yes, yes. or you get out of bed and you're dizzy and that That's sort of right. thing is going on, Folks, you probably have adrenal fatigue. Mm-hmm. Exactly so right. sometimes that the, that dizziness uh, suddenly when you get up and everything is your adrenals are depleted. You are exhausted. And Mary, that's why whenever anyone, you're right, I have to jump in. Whenever anyone has dizziness, there's four key categories you need to kind of determine. Is it vertigo, which is uh, spinning? Is the room spinning? Is it presyncope, where you feel like you're about to faint or about to pass out? Is it disequilibrium, like my buddy had, who literally felt like his equilibrium was going because he had C1 out of position? Or is it just lightheadedness? And so any one of those people will interpret as dizziness. But uh, you're right. Adrenal fatigue is so common, especially in the world we live in. We're living in the last days, folks. And again, men's hearts will start to fail them for fear. But what that stress does, it creates adrenal fatigue and lightheadedness is one of the key signs. With adrenal fatigue, if you, I used to jump out of bed. And then when I got so burnt out, I've gone through burnout so many times, mm-hmm. I, had to, I had to fix it myself. Me too. I've and, gone through it too. <laughs> and here's how you know. When I used to jump out of bed, I felt amazing. I felt all this energy. And then when I got burnt out, I jump out of bed, I get lightheaded like I was about to pass out. That's yeah. adrenal fatigue. Right. And so if you have adrenal fatigue and you get up too fast and you're lightheaded, your adrenals are shot, okay? You need to read my and book, have, Stress Less. Right, and we actually and we have, have a podcast on adrenal exactly. fatigue. And you need to listen to that podcast. Yep. We go through all the key supplements you need. But the most important thing is get in God's rhythm, decrease your stress, quit being so busy, get your sleep, and then take a few key supplements that restore your adrenals. We talk about that in that podcast. Well, this has been good, Don. It's a lot of information. That's a lot of information. And I think that people, you just listen to it again and write it down and be sure and share our podcast with other people. Share the good news. We want you to do that because there's a lot of people out there that are being drugged and getting all kinds of bad reports. And remember, folks, a lot of dizziness and a lot of tinnitus are actually due to medications. Right. And right. so when you get people off those medications, it's amazing how the tinnitus or the dizziness either improves or goes away. And I've seen that so many times. Yep. So always look first and foremost at the meds you're taking. That's a good that's good advice. So we wish you the best. Go to our website, drcolbert.com. And our prayer for you is that you and your loved ones, that you walk in divine health. You prosper and be in health, yep. even as your soul prospers. Amen. God bless you. And until next time, we will see you then. Bye-bye. Thank you.